Hello everyone and welcome to Voice Acting 101. Today's episode, we're gonna look into a crucial step in getting started with voice acting, and that is character creation. The goal of any actor, whether it is behind a mic or on a stage, is to be able to tell a story as a character. So the main task from the first cold read to the final performance is to develop that character. The first and most important step in this process is perhaps the easiest. Read, read the script, just do it. Don't be afraid of it. The script is your friend. Read the text, read everything given to you for your part. But you're probably asking what you should be looking for when reading for your piece in the script. Everything you can possibly know about your character. Look into everything given to you about your character. His or her name, age, likes and dislikes, family, friends, political and religious viewpoints, their address, favorite foods, places, upbringing. I mean it when I say everything about your character. Some of these traits will be placed directly by your character or another character. Some other ones you might have to look up through subtext in the script. However, the script will only grant you a small fraction of what you get to know about your character. In situations like that where you need to know more, the best option is to actually make them up. The more you know about the character, the more in sync you'll be. But how does one do this? What's okay to know and what makes no sense to know about your character? Well then, you can ask yourself questions about the character. What does your character do for a living? How long have they done it? Do they like their job? Or is it fueling another passion? Or do they actually regret working there? Do they have parents, siblings, pets? How do they get along with them? What's their names? How old are they? Did they have friends as a kid? Did they have a best friend? What was their names? How would your character react if a cat walked by them or a dog approached them? What's their social skills? Are they extrusive? Are they intrusive? These are the questions to ask. Now, some of you might be thinking that is an excessive amount of info to know, but I guarantee you, it isn't. All of this will play a vital piece into helping you bring out your best performance behind that character you are now making. With that said, there are times where you should understand you'll have a challenge in syncing with that character. If you can't fully grab the situation of a character because it's never happened to you, then you should relate to it on a situation you have been in. I'm sure most of you have never been a mystical princess of an endangered land facing the wrath of an evil dragon. But maybe you have been assigned as a group leader for a school project that is dreadfully near its deadline, and you need to think rationally and with haste. Might be a bit of an odd connection example, but if you can make it happen, make it happen. Finally, let's talk about some do's and don'ts for character creation. Here's four main do's. Do read the script. Sure, you read your pieces, but maybe read the other's lines. Get a feel for how they will respond or how you are gonna respond. The scenery, the direction of atmosphere, or if you're doing a multi-part series, the script's beyond the current one. Do research. Outside of your own character, go and learn the setting, the area, the common political opinion, the culture, the food, the dialect, the accents if you need to. Take that role and convince me or the client you just plucked them right out of that world and you're showing it to us. Do take time to practice. Rehearse and deliver your lines on a practice level to different crowds. Everyone responds differently to a moment. So you need to know what your key reactions will be. Look for ways to make sure you get the reactions you want every time. Do take risks. It's easy to play the role safe, but that's not real life. No one ever just sits down and has a boring, monotonous conversation. If you gotta feel ridiculous or outrageously upset for a moment, then do it! <clears throat> like that. The choices you make will always have an aftermath. And if you make that choice memorable and unique, it's worth it. Plus, if you make those choices during practice, you can figure out what gains attention and what doesn't. Now, here are the four main don'ts. Just don't read the lines with feeling. But, but, but you just said you need to feel. I know what I said, but let me explain. Acting isn't just saying lines with feeling. It's about telling the purpose of your character, their wants, their likes, their dislikes, all of that. Saying a line with just feeling tells the audience nothing. Avoid it in your final performance. Because if your only tactic is reading the lines with feeling, you're gonna come across to your audience as just that. Always remember, your character is seeing each line with a distinct thought process and purpose. Don't wing it. It happens time and time again. It always backfires too. Getting behind that mic with a ready performance takes effort, time, and patience. Sometimes, yes, you will meet time frames that are hard to fully brace for, but prepare as much as you can. Because if you go up and just go with it, I guarantee you, it's gonna be noticeable. 
Don't stereotype. It's easy to think that because you're given a childish role, you have to feel like you need to slur your words, maybe act hyper, or overreact to situations. Or even as an elderly role, need to hunch your posture and speak with a dry dialect. It's not always effective in the long run. People are unique, and no two are really the same. If your character does have traits that seem stereotypical, use them in a different light. Think about why they have these traits. What could have happened to them to make them as they are? Figure out what can work and what just sounds really off-putting. Lastly, don't play emotions. Honestly, there is no way to play an emotion. And that's because people have very different viewpoints of what it means to be happy, disgusted, scared, sad, or angry. Instead of just playing an emotion, you should play the source of the emotion. The source of what makes your character feel this way in that exact moment. Think of something that makes you personally happy. Like your favorite show getting renewed for another season, getting food for free, or how about nailing a 100 on your test? Yeah. What about your best friend leaving for a week? Or your pet running away from home? Or losing a loved one in the family? They make you feel sad, don't they? But all of them have a different feeling of sadness, right? Sometimes emotions are going to be complex. Like coming home to someone you love after having a huge fight with them. Makes you feel a little sad and happy, right? Maybe even still a little bit angry? Emotions are all different, so trying to pick one exact way every time never pays off in the long run. The final note to really take from all this is you aren't just acting. You're creating a person straight from your own mind and voice. And the real goal is to convince your client, your audience, and even yourself that this person can and does exist. Thank you all, as always, for listening in. We have officially come down to the halfway point. Stop on by for the next episode where we get to know our voice a little bit better and figure out where it can go. That's right. I'm talking about vocal placement. This is PM Seymour, signing out.